first thing I'm going to do is, is the last time that we were here, we went to basic shapes, my shapes, and then the basic football shapes is what we created last time. So we had our stencils in here, basic players, generic offense, things like that, that you can add to this as well. Uh, if you don't have that, we're more than welcome, more than happy to send you a copy of it as well. But from here, I can just go ahead and grab a, a nice little two up template, drop it on the screen. If you've got that offense created, you can go ahead and click and drag and then use your shortcut, control shift, right carrot arrow to increase the font. Making sure that you guys are really utilizing the, the control and your mouse key and rolling in and out of those drawings. And, and if you're starting to use your keyboard as well, this is something that can kind of help keep everybody uniform. And then just remember, as soon as you drop that stencil and go control shift U, and that's gonna ungroup those objects. So now if you wanted to move that Y back to a bow set, you would, you would be able to do so. Um, so that's pretty important right there. The basic shapes that we also came out with were just a zone block and different things like that to where you guys can really utilize those objects and, and kind of go through and, and just build out your library. Uh, and had a chance to coach Colgan, he may or may not be on here. But he watched the first basic Visio webinar. He called, we FaceTimed, and, and went through a couple items and questions that he had. And I'm not lying. He had one heck of a, an already installed, every blocking scheme that you could possibly think of from his stacks of notebooks over the years. And he simply just took our webinar and started building it out. And, and he's got himself one heck of a library. So Coach Colgan, outstanding job. Nice, nicely done right there. Um, but essentially those are just your basic features. And the one nugget that I, I wanna start off with, and, and I'd like to try and give credit to anybody that teaches us something as well, but Coach Josh uh, Nieswinder, he told us that, hey, you might wanna talk about creating a ribbon up at the top of your page to show users. And this was something that we just learned a couple weeks ago, and, and it's, a, it's a hell of a feature. But what I did was is essentially created, and we talked about the ribbon up here at the top, but I created a new football drawing shape area. So now this is the major of the majors that I typically use when I'm gonna draw on Visio. So I've got my text font, an area for a text box over here. So if I wanted to start dropping in text boxes, you're able to do so. And then that control one, and use that control to click and drag to create those objects and really utilize those shortcuts as well. You can then change your font, your color, your size, increase those as well. So if you're somebody that's not really big into using those shortcuts and you don't really remember them often, well, go ahead and let's create a, a dashboard or a ribbon up at the top that's just your football item. So that way you don't have to go down to the drop down and find the rectangle. And if you're still new and inexperienced, you're like, where the hell's my circle tool? So this is something that we can teach you to do. So if you go up to the file button and if you choose the drop down down here, it's going to say options. When you go into options, there's a menu on the left side that says customize ribbon. But once you go into customize ribbon, you want to go down here at the bottom and choose new tab. Your new tab, you're going to rename it. So select that tab, rename, and I'm just going to change this to webinar for tonight. So once I've chosen webinar, click OK. And now I'm going to create my group. And what I did was I created three groups with this, a text, a drawing, and then an adjustment group. So if I go to new group and rename, down here at the bottom, you can change that to text. And then I'm gonna add another group, rename. These are my drawing tools. And then I'm gonna add another one, rename. And then this is my adjustment group, such as like bring to forward, send to back, those things. So now once you've created those, once you highlight that area for text, go ahead and start rolling through here. So the first one I wanna add is add text. All right, you may throw a bold in there, italicize, underline, different things like that but simply just adding these to the, from the left to the right menu is gonna allow you to do that. So now once I've got decreased font, increased font, if you wanted to adjust it to where you put the increased up at the front, you can use those arrows. Well, now I'm gonna go to my drawing tools and I know the first one that I want is gonna be my pointer tool. So I'm gonna add the pointer tool, and then draw my rectangle, draw my line. I've got my ellipse. Okay, and then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna grab the arc, but if it's not in the popular commands, just drop down to all commands and then every command that's in Visio is gonna be in here. So now I can choose my arc and add that. Now I'm just gonna add a couple adjustments here as well. So I'm gonna go bring to front, send to back, and then our align tool. 
So now I've got just three different areas that I've created. I'm not gonna go through the whole gambit. You can kind of get the idea. Once you're done, hit the okay button. And then now I've got a new tab up here at the top that says webinar. So now I can drop in my text box, increase my font and do things like that to where you're gonna constantly use those quick features, but instead of trying to search for it on the home and you don't really get comfortable with it, create your own football tab so that way you have everything and then you guys are up and running with that. So that to me is a, is a really good nugget to get started with. Um, and now from here, we're gonna kinda go and dive off into creating our wide receiver route tree and creating a new stencil with that. But the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna drop my high school football field in here and I'm gonna show you how to lock this field. So I've got a high school field and I'm just gonna select that field, copy it, minimize, and then I'm just gonna paste it right here into my drawing. Well, once I've pasted that object, it's gonna be an entire object. And now what I wanna do is I wanna lock this to where I don't click on it anymore. So if I go up to the home button, and now I go to layers, I can go assign to layer. And now I'm gonna create a new layer called the field. Once I hit okay, I've got a field layer and this has been added to it. Now I'm gonna go up to the layer properties button and now I wanna select the field and then I wanna lock it. The reason I wanna lock it is, well now this field is completely locked and I can't click on a hash, I can't click on a sideline. So when you start building out different stencils, this is gonna be really helpful for you because now you're not gonna waste time accidentally clicking and moving that field in the background and then you've gotta adjust it to, back, to go back and match your formation. So that's a, a really good nugget that I think that is gonna be helpful for you. So now what we wanna do is, well, we created our basic football shapes the last time we were here. Let's go ahead and start creating our wide receiver routes. And we're gonna start with our outside wide receivers. So now I'm just gonna go up here and go to more shapes, create a new stencil, and then I wanna go to save as. So once that pops up, that save as, outside receiver, routes. So now it's saved. I'm going to go back to my basic football shapes and I'm just going to drop in a player as a nice little reference here. So I can shrink that tab to fit, make it fit. And then I don't necessarily have to have an X or a Z or anything in that label. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating my route tree. So the very first one we want is just a nice little vertical route. So I'm going to go up to football, choose my pointer tool. Now I want to go to my line and I want to make sure that it's a black line. I'm gonna choose my arrow end cap, whichever one you prefer, and now you can go to that line tool, and then you can draw that vertical. I go control one, and then a, a couple questions I've been getting is, well, can I copy and paste this route back into the box? You can, but to me the best, excuse me, the best method is hold that control key, click and drag it, and now you've got a vert concept. Okay, next up. Just hold down the control key to click and drag. And now I want to post at 12 yards. So I'm going to go control six, or you can click your line tool at the top. Hold down the shift key, and it's going to stay on that green line. So now once I get that post at 12 is my breaking point. You get it 45 degrees, control one, hold that key down, bring it back in here, and now you've got post dash 12. Well, now if you want a post that's going to break at 10, Hold down the control key, click and drag, leave it right there on that line, and now just simply drag your arrow down to that breaking point is now at, at 10. Hold the control key, bam, drop it in. Post is at 10, then you can go to eight. Okay, and then if you want a skinny post, you just drag that back in, or you can go back to your control six. You've got it at eight yards. And then it's going to be a little bit more vertical. So now I can drag that in. Now I've got skinny posts. Now here's the great thing. Well, you've got a post, which is the same exact route as your corner. Well, you can either label this as post corner. You can drop in a new corner. Or if you want to always have those in, just select all those objects and go control H to flip it. And then grab your first one. So now you've got corner 12. Corner at 10, so you guys get the gist with those. So now go ahead and delete that. 
And now I can delete out my vert as well. So now you want your next progression of routes. So maybe you're gonna go with a dig concept. So go control six, you've got your line, you got a dig right there at 12, boom. So control one, hold down your control key, bam, now you've got your dig at 12. That's the same thing as your out route as well. Now you can go control six if you wanted to add your 12, six, seven, eight, however detailed you wanna get with it. But your next progression might be a comeback or a curl. So now if I go to that 12 yard point, once I get to this object, as long as you continue to click and carry on that blue bubble, you can draw that nice little out comeback right there. If you wanna make that adjustment, you can bring it back in and tighten it down. Hold that control key, drag it over. Now you got your comeback at 12. Next progression, you may have an over concept. So if you go control seven, you're gonna get that arc tool, so drag and drop it. If you don't get the right direction, remember, go right back to the home location to where that arc disappears. Now hold down that mouse and get it rolling in that direction that you want. So now you've got yourself a nice little over. And then if you want to flatten that line out, this is the, a little bit of a different tool. Go to that pencil and it's going to drop a blue bubble in here. When it drops that blue bubble, bubble in there for that pencil tool, you can take that and adjust it to where now you can kind of get a more flat of a nice little over angle. So now you've got your over right there. If you want that same shallow cross, you can take this tool and drag it right there, make that bubble, make it a little bit more of an adjustment. So now you've got a shallow cross for your drive concept. So there's you know, a nice little foundation of your starting point for your outside receivers. Well, next up, you may choose inside receivers. So I wanna save that stencil, go up to more shapes, New stencil, right click, save as, inside wide receiver routes. Okay, so now all you have to do is just make that adjustment of, hey, our outside inside receiver, you may be on the Nash right there, which we call the Nash is between the numbers and the hash. So now you start building out that route tree. You may start from the bottom. So now you got a little speed out. Control one, drag and drop it, boom. Speed out. Control six, you may leave this up and go control one. So now I've got an out at five. And then what this is doing is this is giving you a nice little chance to really get a good look at your, your combinations and seeing what you lack in your route tree. So there's your inside receiver route stencils. And then it's the same thing. You take those entire objects and go control H. Use your keyboard to drag and drop those right back into the center. And now you can add one, two, and three routes to create those six combinations right there. So being able to create those outside and inside receiver routes is, is, is really nice. And then the other part to me that's really good about this is that if you've got coaches on staff that aren't very experienced in terms of drawing in Visio, it's just a matter of sharing these stencils and getting it into their hands and going, coach, if, if, you know, if you wanna draw a speed out, here's your speed out, bam, you just drag and drop it right onto the screen. And typically, as long as they're drawing in the same format of what you set up with this original stencil, all of your drawings are gonna be identical and your kids are gonna learn better, your coaches are gonna be able to teach better. It's just gonna look a lot more crisp for your drawings. So utilizing that, you can start to get into creating your concepts for your routes as well. So now if you're gonna use a one word concept for let's say smash, so I can go control seven, or I go control one, I'm sorry, and I'm gonna go to my outside receiver route. Well now I've got a comeback, and I'm gonna drag and drop that right there. So now I've got a little comeback at four. Now I can grab my corner, hold down the control key, click and drag, and now you're gonna create a new stencil Save as wide receiver concept. So now hold down the control, drag and drop it. There's your smash concept. So now anytime that you need to drop in smash, no matter where, if you're either it's a tight end 
and a Z receiver, it doesn't make a difference. You drop the smash concept in. Well, if it's not in the right spot, just go control shift U to de-link those. And now you can drop that object in right there. You've got your smash. Select both of those receivers and go control shift F, <clears throat> excuse me, to bring them to the front. So that right there is just something, just another idea of, of taking your stencils and you know making those the biggest part of building out your library when it comes in terms of, of starting your drawings. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so next up, so once you've got that vertical route tree and you've saved that stencil, you, you've got your wide receiver stencils. Well, next up, we wanna start going through the next progression of, of what you may have and, and where we like to start is gonna be motions. So now go back to your basic football shapes. And then you kind of, Want to drag that entire offense in. If it's too big for your field, you can always shrink it. Now you've got them in the field. Control shift U, hit OK. So now you've got this. And we're just going to start with a generic pro formation. OK. And now I want to make sure that the Z is off the ball. And then always use this trick. If you've got your X receiver and you, don't, and you want him on the line of scrimmage, but you want to make sure he's even with that tackle, select the left tackle, hold the control key, select the X, go up to your align button and choose the top, and then that's going to automatically create that X and make sure that he's directly on that line of scrimmage. Hey, Kevin, one relevant question right now. Yep. Um, the question is, can I share these shapes, the stencils you're creating, with my staff? And just Absolutely. Just give a, a quick one. Yep, yes sir. Okay, so the stencils that I've created, the first thing is where do those live on my system? Well, if you go to your, your file explorer and if you go to your documents folder, there's gonna be a folder in there that says my shapes and it's got a green little link to it. This is gonna be big because anything that lives in this folder is what's gonna be accessible for more shapes and then my shapes. So what these files are is these are stencil files, which is a .vssx. All you have to do is put your stencils on a thumb drive or email it to them. They're gonna download that file and copy and paste it to their document shapes folder and then they will have access to that as well. Good one. Uh, one other one that I think is relevant from a coach. How free is the line tool? Can you draw an outside inside stem off the line of scrimmage for an example, rather yes, than sir. just the standard? Okay, so go ahead and grab that line tool. So now, depending on how you wanna show that stem, to me, I like to show a little bit of an arc. So I'm gonna go control seven. So get that arc to where it's going out to the left. And now you can grab that line tool and get right back inside. And then you can draw that dig. So it's up to you however you want to customize it. If you don't like using the arc, you can just grab that line tool and go with an outside release. And then as you keep adding to that, it's going to carry that shape with you. So great question right there. And then, Kevin, again, uh, the, the, the football field enamored some. So if they want the football field, I put your email address on there already. Just so everybody knows that football field that he's using, what we're glad to send it to you by email. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. So one of the things that we like to talk about is, is the different ways that you can show motion. It's funny, Andy and I had a conversation about this and, and the way that he's done it over the years and the way that I used to do it. it to us, it doesn't matter. We just want to show you a couple different nuggets and, and have you take it home with you and, and see what you like. But for instance, to me, it, it all depends on where you want people to finish. You know, it, it's just a matter of, do I want to start with a dashed line on an object and, and have 12 guys on the field and showing different shapes and shifts? It's up to you. But one of the things is go ahead and start at the end with wherever the, you want that Z to align. So if the ball's in the middle of the field, we're going to be one yard off the top of the numbers. So all I'm going to do is, is I'm going to grab my line tool, and then I essentially am going to draw a line where I wanted them to start. So we're going to go back to that Nash concept. So if I've got my arrow still right here, you're just going to go to your arrows, and now there's a little dot right there at the bottom. Well, that's going to be where you start. And if you've got kids who are very non-smart, go ahead and drop in a text box right there. 
and say the Nash and go control shift decrease. So that way that kid knows exactly where he's aligned. If he's one yard inside the numbers, line it up and then just go numbers minus one. Yeah, those are just little tricks in, of the trade that we used for our scout cards back in the day to help kids get lined up. Okay, so now you've got your Nash and you've got your solid line right here. First thing you want to do is select that line, go up to your dash tool, and now you can choose whichever dash. You got a small dotted or you got a half dotted. It, it, it's up to you however you want to decide, but that's my motion tool. So now I'm going to take this object that I have, and this is gonna get added to my toolbox. Okay, I've got that added to my wide receiver concept, so I'm gonna delete that out. I'm gonna to go to more shapes, new stencil, right click, save as. And now this is our motion stencil. Okay, so I've just got Nash right there. You can build out numbers minus one, same thing. So grab those little tricks of the trade that's gonna help you get this thing in there quicker. So now once you've got that motion, you can hold down that control, drag it in. So now we've got, this is Z left to right motion. So it's just left to right or it's right to left. So now once you've got that object, it's done. The other way that we've seen people do the same exact thing is that you may take that same Z receiver, drop them right here, and now you go up to your dashes and you make it a small dash or a half right there. And so now that the player knows, that, hey, you're actually lined up right here. And then you can grab that left to right, go control H to flip it. You wanna make sure that we're below the Q. And then you just change that end cap as well. So now it's just a straight line. So now I've got the Z, so now I can add that in here as well. My starting point. And then you've got that motion. So it's up to you how you wanna do that. So now once you've got that line, this is really nice because then you can adjust that line for however far and however long you want it, but at least you've got that dashed line. So now that was our left to right motion. The next motion is that we're gonna start uh, with a, a ghost motion of going over the top of the backfield. So if we're gonna create that diamonds look. So we're gonna start right here at the Z. I'm gonna go control six, that's gonna get my line tool. And then I wanna draw that line going right there to the edge of the queue. And I'm gonna go control one and, and I'm gonna reset my defaulted line. So I'm gonna deselect the object. I'm gonna go back up here to my arrow and just choose my regular arrow and go control six. So once you've got that adjustment, now I'm gonna grab my arc tool and I'm gonna take that arc and go right back here to the back of the backfield. Same thing, go up to my dash, choose that dotted dash, control one, Drop it in. Now you've got your ghost from right to left. Now if you want your ghost from left to right, just control H to flip it, bam, drop it in. Ghost left to right. And then you can actually move these shapes around in here as well, so that way if you just wanted to adjust this box to where it was small, you can choose which one you want first by navigating those up and down. Okay, so now I've got that ghost motion. Okay, so go ahead and delete that. Next one up is our return motion. So let's say that you want the Z to go from the, from the Nash or maybe from outside and go from the outside to the A gap and then return right back to where he was. So go control six. I wanna drop that down and then show your return going back to this direction to where we're here. And then if you want that dotted line, if you don't want to go to the dash, just remember that you can always use your, your format painter button. So if I drop in a previous motion, I can go up to format painter. And then when I select that Z, that line for the Z, it's going to automatically change it right there for, um, for my dashed line. And then you can drop them back right here, control shift F to bring them to front. And then if you want that end cap, you can always change it as well. So that's what we typically do for a nice little Z return movement. Next one is gonna be our, our halfback, leaving the, leaving the backfield. All right, so if you've got a, a B back and you just wanna slide him out, so boom, boom, boom. All right, so I'm just gonna go control six, just with a little angle to the left guard and then he's gonna kick it back out, going right there to a wing set. 
Control one, line options, is the other way that you can also leave this window open. So if you leave that line options window open constantly, you can change the color, transparency, the width, or anything like that. So that's just a re another really good nugget of, of doing those things and, and having different windows open. If you've got a big monitor or you're working off your TV, multiple monitors, it's definitely something that can help you. Now just take that dash out, bam, so grab the small one. Okay, and then I refer to that as bow motion. Boss motion would be going back to the strong side. Next up, you may have an empty set. So now if you take your A back, I'm holding down the shift key to get me that 90 degree angle. And then he may motion all the way out to the Nash. So I can go control one, use that same control shift P, boom, change it right there. So now I've taken that. Now I've got my tailback set. So tailback motion, being able to kick that outside. So being able to utilize just you know, start slow with your playbook. Um, don't try to draw everything at once. Start off in your concepts of drawing your motions, drawing your shifts and trades, going through those different steps. So that way, anytime you need those objects on the left side of that window, you've got a nice little library and bucket to go through. Um, but that right there is, to me, is just a, a really good progression in terms of drawing your outside receiver concepts, your motions, shifts, trades, like that. Now we're going to get out of the offensive world and jump into the defensive side. So that way it's not always a, an offensive clinic. Okay. So one of the things that I like to create is just a simple little uh, formation blood front type deal. And I'm just going to grab this from one menu to the other. So I'm going to go control A, control C, and I'm just going to work below this drawing. So right here, I've got just a simple little blood front. So blood to us was always two, three techniques. So we talked about last time about dropping in those shades and, and having the ability to do that. But I'm just gonna delete these out because now we're gonna start going with our, with our DN and our D-line stunts. So the first one that we've got is your ET stunt. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna create a new stencil. Stencil. We're gonna create a new stencil and go save as. And now I'm gonna go D-line stunts slash games. Can't use that, so D-line stunts dash games, sorry. Okay, so once you've got that created, go ahead and make sure that you've saved those other documents. All right, so now if I've got my stunts, the first one, we're gonna draw just a simple little slant. So I'm gonna go control six. I'm gonna start right here. We wanna cross the center's face, work vertical, go control one. Now, just being a defensive guy, I, I always like to draw just as a, a different color from everybody else. <coughs> To me, green was always the best just because I want to associate going for my D-line guys, go. Green means go. We don't want to put red on our paper because that's going to tell us to slow down. So now I just want to adjust that arrow. So I've got my arrow chosen. Now I can go up here to my line options and I've got my color. Now I can make that green. So that's what we refer to as a spike. So now I can control in, drop in, spike, we've got that created. Okay, once I've got my spike, I'm just going to leave this over here to the side because I didn't necessarily set my stunt at the front, but now I can go ahead and start drawing my other shape. So now I'm just going to draw my end, my TE stunt, meaning the tackle is going to go first and then the end's going to go second. So if I go control six, I've got my slant going vertical right there, control one. I want to highlight the green arrow I created earlier, control shift P, drop that in and click this object. So bam. Now what I want to do is I want to drop in a text box and just say number one. Adjust that, make it a little bit smaller. Okay, and then you just want to make that font color green as well to match. So there's my first one. He's going first. Well, now I want to create that shimmy. So I'm going to go control six to go vertical. And then the thing that we always like to do was to draw an arc off of that end showing him going inside and he's second. So now I can just go control one. I'm gonna go control shift P on the green, click that object, and now I can go two. So now your DN and your D tackle, you start teaching those guys that progression of, hey, here's how I can draw a nice little line stunt. So now I can select these objects, add that in. Well now anytime that I need this object from my, from my, uh, my playbook install sheet, Clean it up, just align those guys at the top right there so that they're even. 
select all four of these objects. So one, two, and I'm holding down the control key. Click and drag. Well, now you've got yourself a nice little ET stump. I'm sorry, TE stump. Hey, now, Kevin, let me uh, interrupt you. Go ahead. Two questions. Can we keep the My Shapes folder on an, a cloud storage such as Microsoft Drive? That I don't know the answer to offhand. Um, to me, I would just kind of move that file and copy and paste and replace it uh, whenever needed if you guys know that you've made a change, but I don't know how to necessarily link it. It's always been on the, on the C Drive documents folder from my understanding. And then another question, is there a way to set a default line width, for instance, one point font instead of 0.75? Absolutely. So it goes back to what we talked about in our basics presentation. So make sure that you've chosen the pointer tool, deselect all objects, and now when you go up to your line width, you can go to line and weight, and I'll probably go to the home tab because that custom tab I created. So go to the line, weight, and then you can choose that one point. So now when you go control six, you can draw that line and then you can actually see that it's got a little bit more thickness. So yes sir, you can, just set that line as your default. Okay, so once I've got that TE stunt, now we're gonna move it back to the inside. So now I'm just gonna create that NT stunt. So I want the nose going first, and then I want that tackle to shimmy, and he's going second. I'm gonna kick him back down inside to a two eye. If you're moving using your keyboard and it's going too slow, a nice little nugget is zoom out, and then you can move and that object will move a little bit quicker for you. So now I can slide this back in. Boom, now I got my nose stunt. We're just gonna attach this. He's second, he's first, adjust the width, okay? And then you can always align that just over the top. And then align those, boom, boom. One, two, three, four, using that control click. Drag it over. Now you got your NT stunt. Well, now you wanna flip it, right? Just go control H. That's gonna flip it. So now you select all four of those objects. Just move them right back to the right. Well, now you've got your ton stunt. So being able to quickly add those and get those up and running, that, that's a, it's a really good, just easy, simple, simple piece right there. Okay, so we're just gonna clear those out. And then to me, I just, it was always nice to put this on the hash, so that way if, if you've got a boundary stunt or you're dropping the end, you know, go ahead and add that end drop in there as well. So control H will flip that all the way. If you're not worried about the backers, don't worry about it. So now your end, anytime that they're dropping, we always use the blue color. So I'm just gonna go to control seven. I've got my arc. Go back to home if it's not in the right direction. Go up to my color, make it blue. You can make that line width, whatever you want. Choose my end arrow. Control H, you can rotate that to flip it. If it's not the right end arrow, just go back up to your line. Choose that right direction. So now you've got your drop end. So now you're essentially creating your D-line stunts and games. It's any type of D-line movement that you've, you're gonna utilize for your drawings. Get them drawn in here the first time and then that way you're up and running with that the entire time and you're ready to go. Um, but one of the things that we definitely talked about earlier was just the, the stencil manipulation and being able to share that and, and locate that. I just want to go over that one more time. Uh, actually, you know, we, we, we've done that. You can kind of go back and, and, and delete that out as well. Um, Kevin, you're rolling. I really think uh, give them a, a Sam off the edge, a mic pressure, give them a cross dog, and start to build out a little pressure um, stencil for them. All right, so right here, we're just going to go with our basic NCAA blitz. So I've got my objects. I'm going to take my nickel, which is our money symbol. Then I've got my mic. And then I've got my will backer. So I'm just going to make sure that everybody's aligned up at the top. Okay, so now the first thing that I'm going to start with is going right back to our spike technique. So I've got my three tech. Okay, so just make sure that that's aligned properly. 
Now I'm going to grab my end drop. So he's dropping off right there. Next up, I'm going to just use that control and click to duplicate my spike technique and then just adjust, like make sure he's crossing center right there. Same thing. And now it's up to you to decide how you want to show the sand coming off the edge. One of the things that we did was just taking that line tool, going control one, make it green. And now you may want to make this as a little dash. So that way he's creeping up right there. Once you get that, you can go control seven to make sure he's coming off the edge. And if it's still dash right there, just go back to your pointer tool, choose your dash, make sure it's, oh, I'm sorry, deselect that object. Go to your dashes, bam. So now I can carry that through. And if you want it to be straight, it's the same thing. You just change that end cap. So now I've got that line. So now you can see that he's creeping up and he's coming off the edge. If you want to create that bend in it just a little bit so they've got a little bit wider path, it's the same thing from earlier. Grab that pencil tool, and just have it bend just a hair so that way you're showing it coming from the outside and really trying to build that cup. And when we say build the cup, it, it's essentially just having one, two, three, and four being able to have a, a low rusher, two low rushers, and two high rushers. So maybe if you're building that cup, you've got one, two, three, four, and, and just doing, doing that and showing just another visual for your guys. The other way that we've done this in the past is, is essentially trying to connect it to right here. So go and control six, and then essentially just draw a little bit of a bend right here. And then that way it'll connect. And then it's the same thing. You just make that line green. So now you've got just a little step process going through and, and creeping up and it, it's just up to you as to decide how to, how to get that on there. All right, next up you've got your, now you can bring this uh, backer right off the tail of the nose. So I'm just gonna go to control six, draw it going right through the center, take that pencil tool, Bend it just a hair so that way you know exactly where he's rolling. Making that line green or you can go control shift, grab another arrow and drop it in. So now once you've got that object, you can start creating essentially your blitz library. So now you go to those shapes, my shapes, I'm sorry, new stencil. So now here's your pressures. So now if you've got this coming out of multiple fronts, so if you've got it coming out of your 40 front, if you've got it coming out of your nickel front, it's the same concept. You're just gonna end up changing your, your guys on the backside. So now you've got that NCAA pressure. So your NCA, you got your end dropping, you've got your spike, which is going out your cop technique. So now if you wanna start adding your terminology as to what these are teaching, you can take that motions diagram that we did earlier for Nash, and I'm just gonna change that to cop which is contained on pressure. Go back to my pressures, hold down the copy and paste it and drop it right there into your box. So being able to utilize just those different objects and, and being able to draw can be very helpful. Um, Kevin, question, a okay. uh, question here. Can you open up the shortcuts? This is a question on the, on the group. Can you open up the shortcuts and just review those with us quickly? Yes, sir. All right, so your shortcuts, all right? I'm gonna drop this into a little half menu here so we can see them on the left and, and have this on the right as well. All right, so your shortcuts, your pointer tool, you've got control one. This is gonna go back through uh, to your select tool. So instead of having to go up here and grab select and then move that object, and then if you wanted to draw, you've gotta go your line tool. That control one will get you to the NCAA. Control six will get you to that line tool. Control seven will be your arc tool. And then if you wanna select all the objects, except for the field because we locked it, control A and then you can delete that out. If you make a mistake, control Z is your best friend instead of having to go all the way up here to that corner. Okay, once you've got that and you're telling you control six, control one, control seven is gonna be really clutch in terms of just dropping that in. 
The next one to me that's really important is going control H and control J. Well, if you want to look at this from a defensive side and you wanted to flip this to an offensive perspective, if you go control J, it will flip everybody over right there as well. So now you can show that just from a quick perspective and making that change. If you've got a drawing that's on the hash and you wanted to flip it from left to right, we talked about that earlier, control H. Okay, if you want to rotate a shape, control R will rotate those guys as well. So that's definitely something that can help you when you're trying to get arrows together. If you're trying to group items together, so if I wanted to be able to select my entire defensive line at once, I can select each one of these guys and go control G, and then that's going to group everybody together at one point. So now the entire D line is one. So now if you wanted to flip those, you can go control H, and it's just a nice little quick trigger right there to be able to get that jumping going. Control shift U is the opposite of your grouping. So if you go control shift U, it's going to ungroup everybody together. This is really big when you're dropping in blitzes or anything like that. It's going to be multiple objects. Control shift U will delink it from the master. You can click OK and then you can move those shapes around. We discussed our format painter, the bring to front and send it back is really clutch because now if I've got an object and it actually goes on top of my drawing here, if you wanted it to go below, you can select this object, control shift F, and that's actually going to bring your, your player to the front of the diagram. That's something that can really help clean up your, your, your drawings right there. But that's a, just a couple quick nuggets and, and going through those shortcuts. One of the things that we definitely wanted to discuss with your drawings here is being able to float your window. So if I take my stencils and I extend this out, and I, you can just do that by clicking and dragging that little window right there. Well, now if I wanted to float these concepts, meaning I wanted my basic football shape to live at the bottom, if you right click and go to float window, you can then drag and drop it down here at the bottom. So now when you're drawing, you can actually have multiple stencils open at once. So if I've got my outside receivers, I'm just gonna go to float window, boom. Now I can drag and drop it right there. Now you've got your outside routes and then you can adjust the sizing of that as well. So being able to have multiple windows up can really help you speed through with your drawings. So now if you're trying to find those different items, such as your offense, you drag and drop it right there on the screen. And now you've got your skinny post concept on the backside. You've got your vertical. So being able to utilize those. And now if you've got your inside receiver routes as well, you can drag and drop those on the page. So those are definitely just something, some of the stuff that can help you out right there in, in terms of being able to float that window. Another thing that you can do with inside your stencils is being able to search those shapes. So if you're trying to quickly find that post concept, you can search all your posts and then it's going to load those shapes and then you should be able to find all of those posts and then it's going to tell you exactly where that's located. So as long as those shapes are open, you're going to be able to search that. So that's definitely something that, that's helpful as well, of being able to find that. So if you're trying to find a double team block, you've got it labeled out as double, double hit enter. Well, now you've got your different types of, of double teams. You may have one with the guard tackle. You may have one with a tight end tackle. So being able to utilize those different objects in your search can definitely help you with, with those drawings as well and getting them in there quickly. Uh, another question, Kevin. Uh, I don't see a freestyle line tool. Does that exist? Freehand question mark. Yes. Um, so it's actually the pen tool up here at the top. So if, if it's located on, on my original, if I go to the home button, choose your drop down. One of them is the pencil, which it is a little bit of a freehand, but not, not, not as good as what you'd hope for. You've got a free form drawing tool, which the free form, form sorry, free form drawing tool actually trails it but it's not that good. So if you're trying to run a meeting and you're trying to draw things, if you've got a Microsoft Surface, there's a, there's a tool on here called the pen tool. And I actually added it to my football one. So now if I go to that pen tool and I've got the color chosen as blue, you can draw different shapes on here in terms of the freehand. So now if you've got your meeting, you can go control one. And now that's actually all one object. So then you can quickly delete that out. So being able to take those and, and drag and drop and get them in there, if you're trying to teach on the fly or, or you're teaching within your meeting, it's definitely something that's helpful. You've also got a highlighter feature here as well. So if you're, you're in your meeting and you're just talking about the left tackle, 
you can go highlight and bring that tool and then you can grab that pen and, and draw exactly what you needed to be able to utilize that as well.